Here to tell us again what happened. I told you I was playing around in the fun house, but Batman decided to shoot me with his batarang. So I got scared and tried to hide, but Superman showed up and used his x-ray vision to see every move I made. <laughs> and don't get me started with Flash. Nobody's out running him. And you didn't do anything at all to provoke them. No, of course not. I was just trying to have a little fun. <laughs> because the Green Lantern recalls having to use his force field to block off your wacky ball, he says you called it. I'd like to have my lawyer now. <laughs> Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Bernardo, your host, and today we're going to be talking about the board game, <gasps> The Joker Funhouse Game by Wonderforge. So this game is interesting. So you're either one of four super friends, you have the Flash, Superman, Batman, and Green Lantern, or someone can play as Joker. So if you're, you can play up to five players, if you're only playing with four, then you're gonna have each player play a hero. And I, normally they say designate one player to be Joker, but I just have each person get a turn being Joker. Uh, and you're trying to work together to get to the finish point before Joker gets to his finish point or just takes you guys all out. So there's a lot going for the game here. Um, and he can take you out with uh, the kind of wacky ball that he has that rolls down, which there are these nice, uh, if you're looking at the board here, it just looks absolutely great on the board. It's such a fun look, has great color contrast to it, and it really pops on the table. You have these kind of plastic rails in which the plastic wacky ball can roll down to knock down heroes to send them back to start. Game itself goes, you spin the spinner and you move to that space. Um, forward on the board. If there's a power space, then you get to use your special ability if you're a hero. Now what those are, if you are Flash, then he jumps immediately to the next power space, which he can move across the board really quickly. Flash makes perfect sense. Batman, if he lands on a power spot, he gets to take the little battering gun and point it towards Joker. And if he can shoot him and knock him down, it puts him back to start on his movement tracker. And we'll get to why that's important in a moment. And you also have Superman who has this really cool mask piece, which this with these red lenses that give you x-ray vision and the x-ray vision works because the movement cards that Joker uses um, when it makes it spin uh, it is going to be crucial in understanding what that is. So Batman, uh, Superman can look at the back of the cards and it kind of decodes what's on it almost like I believe it's code names or um, there, there's another one that I think uses that kind of principle. It, it's been used for so many years and years. Um, but they use it here in this game and it is a fun element. I do enjoy it. So basically they look at the top card and they kind of peel off to look at the next two. So, or the top two and they can discard one of them to the discard pile. Typically you want the one that will allow Joker to move the most. Now the other, um, ability here. It isn't my favorite ability. It is Green Lanterns. He has this kind of triangle force field in which he can place on the board somewhere to potentially block the wacky ball when Joker decides to roll it. Now, how Joker's movements are important, it's trying to also get to the end of its tracker. Now, it can do one of a few things. So with the spinner itself, you can either choose like the wacky ball or the Joker's movement, which he will move up one. And there's also a spot on the spinner there that shows the present. The presence when you draw the cards, which which again is where Superman's ability can come to stop it. There's definitely a lot of interesting elements here. However, what ends up happening in the game is that you're supposed to have all the super friends go and then Joker. And with all everything kind of going um, so quickly and how easy it is to move across the board, the game doesn't last long at all. And it's not hard at all. In fact, if you play the way the rules state you should play, you will never lose to Joker unless they get ridiculously lucky and you just get really unfortunate spins, which sounds absolutely impossible especially if all the super friends go and then Joker. So I ended up fixing this. What I ended up changing is rather than Joker going after every super friend, he goes after each individual super friend. That way he makes it a lot more challenging. And when we did that the second time around that we played the game, it, sp it made things a lot harder. In fact, we would 
we barely won. It was kind of down to the grain. And especially if someone's playing Joker properly. Now, one of the things I'm not a big fan of with Joker is while he moves up the tracker, there's better rails to certain points on the board to where the wacky ball can roll to get you. If you have Green Lantern, you can put it in front of kind of one space that can just block it entirely, which is good, but that's really all Green Lantern obviously is good for. And again, the power abilities don't show up as often as I would have liked, but they definitely do happen. And with the wacky ball itself, it doesn't ever really get its target, so I don't ever find that to be the choice I make if I have between that or a movement card. I always take the movement or uh, any other um, position on that spinner that allows me to move. Uh, so that's definitely an area to where the wacky ball could definitely come in play if everything lines up perfectly. I haven't seen that yet with the few times I have played it, but I do intend to play it a few more times. Um, it's not my favorite game of all time, but it definitely has so many cool, unique elements, and I do think my friends enjoy this game um, because there's just a lot going on, and it's superheroes. It's an easy sell for people. Um, so... I definitely would say this is entirely up to you. If this sounds like the kind of game for you and you get a great deal on it, I highly recommend it. If it's at a high price point of like $30, $40, I do not recommend this game at all. It doesn't have components enough or game design to justify that price point. Uh, I ended up getting this game, I believe, for about $6, so it wasn't expensive at all. So if you get a good deal and this sounds like the kind of game for you, I do recommend it. Um, but I do recommend trying out my rules with having Joker just go after each individual super friend. That that way it makes it a lot more challenging and a lot more a lot more teamwork that you feel like you have to do like oh maybe you should do this so he doesn't get here before I can get to finish so you you each have to get to finish on your own but you all have to make it or Joker wins um, so it's things like that that I do enjoy with the game. It has really cool components, and I love that each hero has its own ability. Uh, and again, Joker has so many kind of interesting things that it can do, um, such as the amount of movement it can make, the cards it can use to move, the spinner it can use to move, the wacky ball that it has. It just has a lot of really fun elements, and I do very much love um, that kind of back and forth mechanism there especially again with all those abilities but that's honestly all i have for you guys today if you are interested in notifications there is a bell up there somewhere please like comment and subscribe i do appreciate any feedback i'm trying to make these videos more and more outrageous and with your guys help i have been doing so monday regular board game reviews wednesday weekly update slash talks and then on friday is my vintage board game reviews and that is all i have for you guys today i'll see you guys next time